In this exercise, we're going to continue to work on this file we've been working on in previous lessons uh, to create a nav bar at the top. And we're going to use this text that we have here that's currently wrapped in a nav tag that we've already created. And we will turn that into a full functioning nav bar using both HTML and CSS for that. So the first thing I want to do, I think, is probably convert them all to links. And then we'll convert it to a list or we create a list out of those links. And then we'll start to apply some styles. Now, if I go down to my code view, you can see here, again, if I highlight that nav tag, it's just the four text elements, four words inside of that set of nav tags. So I'm going to go over to my insert tab and I'm going to highlight the text in the text in the code view. And I'll start with the word home and I'll just go and apply a hyperlink by clicking on it here. And you can see the word home appear, which was what was highlighted. And I can either use my browse for file or type in the link by hand. So this file is going to link to the index.html. This link will link to index.html and I click OK. And I can see that manifested in my code view. So I'm just going to go along here and do the rest of them. So I'll highlight the word about, click on hyperlink, search for that. And I do have that file. Now the next two I'll have to type in because those files don't yet exist. So there's two. So then we'll go to portfolio, hyperlink. And this one I will need to type in by hand, portfolio.html. So once I create that file, this link will take me there. Click OK. And I have one more to do here. And that's the contact link, hyperlink. And again, I will just hand type that in, contact.html, and click OK. So if you look in my code view, I'm just going to give it a little space here. You can see that now my nav tags are surrounding four links. Uh, just to make this a little easier, I think I'm just going to return these on their own line. And then the next step will be to create an unordered list. And I'll do that by selecting those four links in my code view and then going over to unordered list in my insert tab and clicking that. And you can see that it is surrounded now by the UL tags. It didn't automatically create line tags though, so I will do those independently. And I'm just going to clean this up here so again you can sort of see what's going on. So I've got inside of my nav tags, I've got a UL tag opening and closing and nested in there are my four links. So I'll select each line one at a time and apply a list item. And we'll do that for all four of these. Okay, that's three. And here's the last one. Okay, and four. List item. Okay. Oh, it looks like I missed one here. List item. And I could tell because I didn't see the bullet at the top here. So now you can see that that is in an unordered list, as indicated by the bullets. Of course, the code view tells me so as well. Now, for my next step, I will start to create some styles. So I'm just going to select the nav. Go over to my CSS designer. Just select styles here. And I'll create a new selector for the nav. And I'll make it less specific. We'll just delete body here and nav. Hit my enter key. And I just want to put a white background in there. So I can go over to my properties for background. Or an off-white. Not exactly pure white. I'll make it just a very light gray here. And hit my return key. And there you can see now that we do have a background for the nav bar. So my next step, I believe, is I'm going to create a class style for the nav bar, for the nav list, and I'll call it nav list. So I'm going to just go over here and I'm just going to tighten some of this up here. Add a selector. And I'll make it a class style, so it'll be dot, and I'll call it nav list. And hit enter. And here I'm actually going to remove the bullets. And I'll, I'll make the padding and the margins both set to zero. So we'll start with the bullets. That is a uh, text list style. So if I go over to text here, 
um, text list style let me just find that here there we go right there and I will click none and nothing's gonna happen till I apply this but that will get rid of the bullets now let me go up to the uh, layout and we'll go into the paddings and margin and actually I'll set it here through the standard zero hit my tab key and that does all four sides now let's do the padding as well that was the margin so I'll set it with the shorthand zero hit my tab key and once I apply that you will see that it will change the appearance up here I'm gonna add one more thing it might not come into play but it's kind of a a safety feature if you will if I have too many items I'm just going to go into the uh, overflow and there are more here add property overflow and you can see the shortcuts the hints happening here and we'll pick hidden so if anything does flow outside of that menu it'll just hide itself okay so it's I guess we can apply that now and we'll apply that to the UL so I go over to the UL this space and I can start to type in class and you can see that it automatically fills that in and when I click on there it fills in the syntax and I have these to choose from and it's nav list that I wish to apply there we go and you can see what happened there it tightened up my margins my padding got rid of my bullets so the next step will be to actually bring these guys and put them in a row and I think we'll use a float for that so I'm gonna create another new class style and let me just again just tighten these up here so I have more room okay so I'll add another new class style this one I'll call dot nav list item so this will go on each line it'll be applied to each line item so nav list item hit my enter key and here I just want to apply a float left so if I go down here and just scroll below here float left okay so we'll add nav list item class to these list items now I'm going to show you something really cool in here because it's going to be exactly the same for all four of these I can actually go in here put my insert key if I hold my shift and my alt key down or shift option on the Mac I can actually create multiple cursors meaning when I type it's going to type the same thing on all four lines here so let's just leave a space class equals quote marks and I just have to type that in and you see how it closed my quote marks nav list and I better make sure I type this correctly item there we go and you see what happened at the top now they are all floating to the left Now I'm going to want to style this a bit further, of course, and give it some breathing space around each of these items that will be resembling buttons, if you will. And I will attach that actually to a more specific class style, which will be nav list item links. So let me go in here and click add nav list item and then space A. So that means any link and I'll hit my return key, any link that is contained within the class nav list will take on the following set of properties and here's where I'm going to give it a bit of space and so on uh, I'm going to start by taking away the underline under text decoration so we'll just go to text decoration and click none and you can see that is actually manifesting itself as soon as I make a change because nav list item is currently applied and this is just a item if you will within the nav list class so we started by taking away the underline let's give it a bit of space now actually you know what I'll I'll set the display to block for each of these as well so we'll just go down to display and we'll just have to find it here and I can actually type it in if I can't find it in the list display and block so that's going to make each item like a block item so with the float and the space applied they will act as their own entity if you will now we'll go down to padding 
I'll actually go up to layouts here and call it the padding and set let's see I'm gonna go around and I'll set the top one to 14 pixels 14 px hit my tab key and on the other sides I'll set it to 16 you can see the space being created here so we'll try 16 for the rest of these let's see px Sixteen there, hit my tab key, and one for the bottom. Okay. Now, it is nicely spaced, but I actually don't want to have the blue. I actually want to turn these into sort of a, a gray color. So I'm actually going to go up to text here, and choose a medium gray, if you will. Just hit my enter key, and there we go. So I also want to add some mouse over features. So that's going to require an even more specific uh, class style. It will be a nav list item, A, but we're going to get even more specific. So I'm going to create a new selector once again. Nav list item space A. And I want it to be for the hover state. So we go colon. And you can see when I type that in, I get my code hints here. So hover is what I want to apply it to. Hover is when I mouse over the item. And I'm going to turn these black on, upon hover. So I'll hit my enter key. And we'll just go into color. And I'll just choose black. It actually is chosen here. And hit my enter key. And just do a save all right now. Okay. So when I mouse over it, look at that. They do change black. So that's basically it. You can create some active states as well and some visited states using the same method. It'd be nav list item A colon active as well as visited. So maybe we'll do one more of those. We'll do active, which is which page am I on? So I'll just make a little more room here and add nav list item space A colon active. And I can see the shortcut there, hit my enter key. And I think I'll make that one maybe a, uh, a darkish red. So we'll just go down here, to get this burgundy color going, hit my enter key, and away we go. And just save all. Save all. So that is how we can leverage HTML, primarily using links and and lists and then styling those accordingly using floats and background colors and so on uh, using a number of class styles to ultimately get this elegant looking navbar at the top and that is our lesson on creating a navbar using HTML and CSS